Hey guys, so um, welcome to Caver 461. Um, as you may have gathered by now, I uh, recently just took a trip to Mexico and being a, being a serious dedicated rock hound um, and a gemologist, I'm of course interested in what Mexico has to offer. Well, the area I was in was uh, Tulum, it just happened to be during their celebration of their national day. <laughs> Big parades, paramilitaries. <laughs> Schoolgirls with drums, uh, rock bands, the whole the whole works. really kind of a beautiful place to live. It's on the Yucatan and um, I'd always, I always make a good search of Mindat before I go anywhere just to see what kind of rock and mineral stuff is available and uh, sadly with the Yucatan it seems a little sparse but something I was learning was uh, the presence of uh, Chiapas Amber not in the Yucatan but of course they're selling it all across the, uh, the tourist areas of Mexico. So uh, Way back in, I think it was, a, it was in the 1950s, there was a Danish explorer, a guy by the name of Franz Blum. And uh, he was the one who really discovered the Chiapas Amber. Now, it's, uh, it's generally stuff in the region of, you know, between 22 and 25 million years of age. Uh, and amber being a resin that has been excreted from these ancient trees, dribbles down the bark like a honey and drops into the soil. As it does so, it's often trapping insects and it hits a soil and we find it either as, as what is called a copal, which is uh, a resin that hasn't fully undergone a polymerization process, or we find it as the actual amber, which has undergone the polymerization, in other words, joining the, the complex organic chains together, weaving them together into something that's a lot more durable. So you will notice uh, if you're looking at copal, one of the, the qualities of copal is if you drop uh, acetone on it from the nail varnish, say, it's going to get all sticky. Uh, amber, of course, doesn't have that quality. So that's one of the ways you can differentiate between copal and amber. Seems to be a lot of what appears amber-like here in Tulum, with distinctive Mayan appearances with coral. You know, something looks like turquoise. Always got the old skull motif thing going on. All sorts of interesting Mayan appearing, appearing stuff. It's kind of beautiful. I wonder what that's worth. That's Chiapas amber? Uh-huh. Where did they find it? <coughs> In underground. The, underground? Yes. In the swamp? 18 meters. 18 meters. No, 10 or 8 yeah. meters. Eight. Okay. That would better give it back before I drop it. I don't want to drop that on you. That is amazing. Yeah. But look, the rock, this is older. Because, oh, yeah, because it's dark. Why is expensive? First, we have, why is expensive the amber? To find it, Yeah. We, if we have good luck, the pieces no scratch. Okay. Because we have to polish. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how do you say in English, yeah. but this is the same that you used to move the wood or the uh -huh. iron. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know the oxy? Yes, yes, yes. You like the same? Yes. Very la, interesting. La, and so you la, make la, all la. this yourself? Yes. Wow. I show you all the pieces more. Okay. So this Chiapas amber, pretty well 95% of the amber that you'll find in Mexico, uh, and in this case on the um, the Mayan Riviera, uh, at least 95% of it is coming from Chiapas. Uh, its quality uh, is definitely something that rivals the the Dominican amber. Um, the Chiapas Amber is pretty young. We're talking 22 to maybe about 26 million years of age. Uh, now you compare that to say the Lebanese Ambers, which are generally a lot older and darker. Um, uh, they're, they're up in the region of about 125 million years of age. Now you can date the Amber by the inclusions, the types of insects that you're finding within the Amber. And what they found is 
when they're looking at the Baltic amber, which is the vast majority of amber that you're going to find on the market, but not in Mexico, I might add, uh, the Baltic amber, it all came from a, a forest about 400 and I think it was 440 to 444 million years ago. Um, and what, what's happening now is this Baltic amber, it washes up from the sea because it has a specific gravity um, of about 1.05. So in a, in a heavily salty um, liquid, it's going to float. So hence the reason this is how it actually comes up, floats on the surface and gets deposited on the beach. And they're also finding that the German ambers are much the same. They think they came from the same forest as the, as the, the ocean-washed Baltic ambers. I cleaned only one side to show to the people. Oh, that's wrong. amber? But wow. don't forget, the trees are different kinds, different species. Yeah. Okay. That means some amber can be yeah. different color, more yeah. yellow, yeah. more green, more brown. Yeah. also red. But the red is for, because it's underground, the red. Oh, yes. yeah. Do you ever get insects in that stuff? Oh, yes. You do, eh? do, you, do you have in any? The insect is more expensive. Hold this yeah. one. Do is that red? Move forward a bit, Maggie. Oh, that's green. Oh, okay. Green, like a green amber. That's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, it's gorgeous. Wow. Look at that. But to check, to know when it's real, yeah. you need this. Yeah. Technology. How does that help? Oh, oh it's a um, UV oh, light. Oh, that's beautiful. Uh -huh. Yeah. Only in the area yeah. where it's not the rock, we see the amber. You see? Yeah. Look at Yeah. Only I in see. the area, then it's clear. Yeah. And then it goes we like see that, the eh? green. Yeah, we Beautiful. Did, we did. Wow. What's your business called? What is this business? Oh, coral. Coral. Another interesting quality with the amber is that it can pick up an electrical charge. So when you're rubbing it, um, it generates this charge and then it'll pick up little pieces of paper. So when you're buying the amber, uh, check it out carefully. Remember, amber is very soft, and so when you're mixing it with corals and, and other harder rock, uh, you want to be sure that uh, the amber is not going to get worn. Um, you know, you don't want to confuse it with, say, a, a quartz like material like a carnelian, which is much heavier, uh, it's colder to the touch, it's much harder. Um, you want to be sure that the amber you're buying is truly the amber, it's the legitimate stuff, it's not copal. It's not just some kind of weird plastic they've put together. And so those are some of the little tests that you can use um, to make sure you're getting uh, the, the real McCoy. Oh, look, look my at other that. beautiful designers, wow. Mayan warriors. Yeah, warriors. This is the red amber. Okay, okay the, the red, red amber. Oh, yeah. Oh, look it's at like that. Look at that. Color, you can right? see a lovely <gasps> sort of greenish. This is red. Red, okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know what kind of tree, but the red. The tree's probably even, it looks, is this insects or pieces of, there's pieces of plant in that one there. I don't know how do you say in English, but in Spanish we say hierro. Hierro. It's like a vitamins. How okay. do you say that? Okay. Yeah. That gives us hierro. Hierro. That makes the red color. Okay. The hierro. Hierro. Because when we polish the red inside yeah. is yellow. Oh. See, just the yellow gives us that color. Yeah, yeah. See? Okay. Look at the inclusions here. Oh, what is that? Is that insects? So when you're looking at the amber, uh, the Baltic amber, it's, it's typified by these what they call sun spangles. And the sun spangle is um, uh, a sort of a, like, it looks like a fracture, almost like a little shiny lily pad within the amber. And it's because amber that's got all sorts of pockets in it and liquids and spaces and whatever, they've heated it up to about 180 degrees and then slowly cooled it. If they cool it too fast, you get a great portion of these sun spangles. And looking at this beautiful beetle here, you can see the sun spangling uh, in its abdomen. And that's, that's typical of the Baltic amber. Within the, uh, the Mayan culture, they have certain gem materials, or what we now call gem materials, that they valued greatly. Uh, of course, amongst them, uh, the jadeites. And uh, in particular, to what you'll see more commonly in the, in the jewelry that's displayed along the Mayan Riviera, we're talking turquoise, we're talking corals, um, and of course, amber. And 
a lot of this stuff is not necessarily originating, you know, for example, the turquoise directly in this area, but they were also a trading nation. Great warriors of the Mayan time, uh, they used amber in what they called uh, bezotes or lower lip rings. And the amber would be taken into the core cities, the, the, the large, like, you know, Chichen Itza, um, uh, Coba, places like that. They would come as tribute from the smaller city-states, so along with the slaves and um, uh, the, the sacrifices that they would be taking, along with that would come these large lumps of amber that were used um, always in Central America as status symbols. You know, the size of the bead often indicated the, the level of status of the person. Mexico just has the most incredible variety of really cool kind of gemstones. I guess the guy at the store showed us a good chunk of them. They had some jelly opal, uh, this orange opal that was really cool. Tons of jadeite, um, which is different from the nephrite. And um, what else did he have? Now I'm distracted. Uh, oh yeah, the amber, of course, lots of amber. And it looked like it was all like lovely Mayan designs. 